सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर क्लास सेवेंथ इन टाइटल्ड आर पास टू दिस इज चैप्टर नंबर नाइन द मेकिंग ऑफ रीजनल कल्चर्स फ्रॉम पेज नंबर वन हंड्रेड ट्वेंटी टू टू पेज नंबर वन हंड्रेड थर्टी सेवन लेट्स लिसन टू चैप्टर नंबर नाइन द मेकिंग ऑफ रीजनल कल्चर्स page number 122 one of the commonest ways of describing people is in terms of the language they speak when we refer to a person as a tamil or an odia this usually means that he or she speaks tamil or odia and lives in tamil nadu or odisha we also tend to associate each region with distinctive kinds of food clothes poetry dance music and painting sometimes we take these identities for granted and assume that they have existed from time immemorial however the frontiers separating regions have evolved over time and in fact are still changing also what we understand as regional cultures today are often the product of complex processes of intermixing of local traditions with ideas from other parts of the subcontinent as we will see some traditions appear specific to some regions others seem to be similar across regions and yet others derive from older practices in a particular area but take a new form in other regions the cheras and the development of malayalam let us begin by looking at an example of the connection between language and region the chera kingdom of mahodayapuram was established in the 9th century in the south western part of the peninsula part of present day kerala it is likely that malayalam was spoken in this area the rulers introduced the malayalam language and script in their inscriptions in fact this is one of the earliest examples of the use of a regional language in official records in the subcontinent on the left hand side of this page a question is being asked written in a blue box find out how many states have been created in the last 10 years is each of these states a region page 123 at the same time the cheras also drew upon sanskritic traditions the temple theater of kerala which is traced to this period borrowed stories from the sanskrit epics the first literary works in malayalam dated to about 12th century are directly indebted to sanskrit interestingly enough a 14th century text the leela tilakam dealing with grammar and poetics was composed in mani pravalam literally diamonds and corals referring to the two languages sanskrit and the regional language on the top of this page a picture is shown this is figure 1 This is an early Kerala inscription composed in Malayalam. On the right-hand middle of this page, a question is being asked, written in a blue box. Find out when the languages you speak at home were first used for writing. Rulers and religious traditions, the Jagannath cult. In other regions, regional cultures grew around. religious traditions the best example of this process is the cult of jagannath literally lord of the world a name for vishnu at puri orissa to date the local tribal people make the wooden image of the deity which suggests that the deity was originally a local god who was later identified with vishnu in the 12th century One of the most important rulers of the Ganga dynasty, Anantavarman, decided to erect a temple for Purushottam Jagannath at Puri. 
Subsequently, in 1230, King Anangabhim III dedicated his kingdom to the deity and proclaimed himself as the deputy of the god. On the right-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 2. It shows the icons of Balabhadra, Subhadra and Jagannath. Palm Leaf Manuscript, Odisha, page 124. As the temple gained in importance as a centre of pilgrimage, its authority in social and political matters also increased. All those who conquered Orissa, such as the Mughals, the Marathas and the English East India Company attempted to gain control over the temple. They felt that this would make their rule acceptable to the local people. On the left-hand top of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 3. This is Jagannath Temple, Puri. The Rajputs and Traditions of Heroism In the 19th century, the region that constitutes most of the present-day Rajasthan was called Rajputana by the British. While this may suggest that this was an area that was inhabited only or mainly by Rajputs, this is only partly true. There were and are several groups who identify themselves as Rajputs in many areas of northern and central India. And of course, there are several people other than Rajputs who live in Rajasthan. However, the Rajputs are often recognized as contributing to the distinctive culture of Rajasthan. These cultural traditions were closely linked with the ideals and aspirations of rulers. From about the 8th century, most of the present-day state of Rajasthan was ruled by various Rajput families. Prithviraj, Chapter 2, was one such ruler. These rulers cherished the ideal of the hero who fought valiantly, often choosing death on the battlefield rather than face defeat. On the right-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is Figure 4. This is the picture of Prince Raj Singh of Bikaner. Stories about Rajput heroes were recorded in poems and songs, which were recited specially by trained minstrels. They preserved the memories of heroes and were expected to inspire others to follow their example. Ordinary people were also attracted by these stories, which often depicted dramatic situations and a range of strong emotions, loyalty, friendship, love, valour, anger, etc. Did women find a place within these stories? Sometimes they figure as the cause for conflicts, as men fought with another to either win or protect women. Women are also depicted as following their heroic husbands in both life and death. There are stories about the practice of sati or the immolation of widows on the funeral pyre of their husbands. So those who followed the heroic ideal often had to pay for it with their lives. On the bottom of this page, a map of the subcontinent is shown. This is Map 1. It shows the regions discussed in this chapter. The names of these regions are Himachal Pradesh, Rajasthan, Kerala, Orissa, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh. Page number 126. Beyond Regional Frontiers The Story of Kathak If heroic traditions can be found in different regions in different forms, the same is true of dance. Let us look at the history of one dance form, Kathak, 
now associated with several parts of North India. The term Kathak is derived from Katha, a word used in Sanskrit and other languages for story. The Kathaks were originally a caste of storytellers in temples of North India, who embellished their performances with gestures and songs. Kathak began evolving into a distinct mode of dance in the 15th and 16th centuries with the spread of the Bhakti movement. The legends of Radha Krishna were enacted in folk plays called Ras Leela, which combined folk dance with the basic gestures of the Kathak storytellers. Under the Mughal emperors and their nobles, Kathak was performed in the court, where it acquired its present-day features and developed into a form of dance with a distinctive style. Subsequently, it developed in two traditions or gharanas, one in the courts of Rajasthan, Jaipur, and the other in Lucknow. Under the patronage of Wajid Ali Shah, the last Nawab of Awadh, it grew into a major art form. By the third quarter of the 19th century, it was firmly entrenched as a dance form not only in these two regions, but in the adjoining areas of present-day Punjab, Haryana, Jammu and Kashmir, Bihar and Madhya Pradesh. Emphasis was laid on intricate and rapid footwork, elaborate costumes as well as on the enactment of stories. On the left-hand top of this page, a question is being asked, written in a blue box. Find out whether there are traditions of heroes or heroines in your town or village. What are the qualities associated with them? In what ways are these similar to or different from the heroic ideals of the Rajputs? On the bottom of this page, a picture is being shown. This is figure 5. It shows a dance class at Lakshman Temple, Khajuraho. Page number 127. Kathak, like several other cultural practices, was viewed with disfavor by most British administrators in the 19th and 20th centuries. However, it survived and continued to be performed by courtesans and was recognized as one of six classical forms of dance in the country after independence. Classical Dances The question of defining any art form as classical is often quite complicated. Do we define something as classical if it deals with a religious theme? Or do we consider it classical because it appears to require a great deal of skill acquired through long years of training? Or is it classical because it is performed according to rules that are laid down and variations are not encouraged? These are questions we need to think about. It is worth remembering that many dance forms that are classified as folk also share several of the characteristics considered typical of classical forms. So, while the use of the term classical may suggest that these forms are superior, this need not always be literally true. Other dance forms that are recognized as classical at present are Bharatnatyam, Tamil Nadu, Kathakali, Kerala, Odissi, Odisha, Kuchipudi, Andhra Pradesh, Manipuri, Manipur. Find out more about any one of these dance forms. On this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 6. It shows Kathak dancers, a coat painting. Page number 100. 28. Painting for Patrons The Tradition of Miniatures 
Another tradition that developed in different ways was that of miniature painting. Miniatures, as their very name suggests, are small-sized paintings, generally done in watercolour on cloth or paper. The earliest miniatures were on palm leaves or wood. Some of the most beautiful of these, found in Western India, were used to illustrate Jain texts. The Mughal emperors, Akbar, Jahangir and Shah Jahan, patronized highly skilled painters who primarily illustrated manuscripts containing historical accounts and poetry. These were generally painted in brilliant colours and portrayed court scenes, scenes of battle or hunting and other aspects of social life. They were often exchanged as gifts and were viewed only by an exclusive few, the emperor and his close associates. With the decline of the Mughal Empire, many painters moved out to the courts of the emerging regional states. See also Chapter 10. As a result, Mughal artistic taste influenced the regional courts of the Deccan and the Rajput courts of Rajasthan. At the same time, they retained and developed their distinctive characteristics. Portraits of rulers and court scenes came to be painted following the Mughal examples. Besides, themes from mythology and poetry were depicted at centres such as Mewad, Jodhpur, Bundi, Kota and Kishangarh. On the left-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 7. It shows Akbar resting during a hunt, Mughal miniature. Another region that attracted miniature paintings was the Himalayan foothills around the modern-day state of Himachal Pradesh. Page 129 By the late 17th century, this region had developed a bold and intense style of miniature painting called Basuhli. The most popular text to be painted here was Bhanu Dutt's Rasmanjari. Nadir Shah's invasion and the conquest of Delhi in 1739 resulted in the migration of Mughal artists to the hills to escape the uncertainties of the plains. On the top of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 8. It shows Maharana Ram Singh II playing Holi, Rajput miniature, Kota. On the bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 9. It shows Krishna, Radha and a companion, Pahadi miniature, Kangra. Page number 130 Here they found ready patrons which led to the founding of the Kangra school of painting. By the mid-18th century, the Kangra artists developed a style which breathed a new spirit into miniature painting. The source of inspiration was the Vaishnavite traditions. Soft colours, including cool blues and greens, and a lyrical treatment of themes distinguished Kangra painting. Remember that ordinary women and men painted as well on pots, walls, floors, cloth, works of art that have occasionally survived, unlike the miniatures that were carefully preserved in palaces for centuries. A closer look, Bengal, the growth of a regional language. As we saw at the outset, we often tend to identify regions in terms of the language spoken by the people. So, we assume that people in Bengal always spoke Bengali. However, what is interesting is that while Bengali is now recognized as a language derived from Sanskrit, early Sanskrit texts mid-first millennium BCE suggest that the people of Bengal did not speak Sanskritic languages. How then did the new language emerge? On the bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 10. It's a page 
from a palm leaf manuscript of the earliest Bengali Ramayana. From the 4th-3rd centuries BCE, commercial ties began to develop between Bengal and Magadh or South Bihar, which may have led to the growing influence of Sanskrit. Page number 131 During the 4th century, the Gupta rulers established political control over North Bengal and began to settle Brahmins in this area. Thus, the linguistic and cultural influence from the mid-Ganga valley became stronger. In the 7th century, the Chinese traveller Hun Sang observed that languages related to Sanskrit were in use all over Bengal. From the 8th century, Bengal became the centre of a regional kingdom under the Pals. Chapter 2 Between the 14th and 16th centuries, Bengal was ruled by sultans who were independent of the rulers in Delhi. Chapter 3 In 1586, when Akbar conquered Bengal, it formed the nucleus of Bengal Suba. While Persian was the language of administration, Bengali developed as a regional language. In fact, by the 15th century, the Bengali group of dialects came to be united by a common literary language based on the spoken language of the western part of the region, now known as West Bengal. Thus, although Bengali is derived from Sanskrit, it passed through several stages of evolution. Also, a wide range of non-Sanskrit words, derived from a variety of sources including tribal languages, Persian and European languages have become part of modern Bengali. Early Bengali literature may be divided into two categories, one indebted to Sanskrit and the other independent of it. The first includes translations of the Sanskrit epics, the Mangal Kavyas, literally auspicious poems dealing with local deities, and Bhakti literature such as the biographies of Chaitanya Dev the leader of the Vaishnav Bhakti movement. Chapter 8 The second includes Nath literature, such as the songs of Mainamati and Gopi Chandra, stories concerning the worship of Dharma Thakur, and fairy tales, folk tales and ballads. Page number 132 Mainamati, Gopi Chandra and Dharma Thakur the Nats were ascetics who engaged in a variety of yogic practices. This particular song, which was often enacted, described how Mainamati, a queen, encouraged her son, Gopi Chandra, to adopt the path of asceticism in the face of a variety of obstacles. Dharma Thakur is a popular regional deity often worshipped in the form of a stone or a piece of wood. The texts belonging to the first category are easier to date as several manuscripts have been found indicating that they were composed between the late 15th and mid-18th centuries. Those belonging to the second category circulated orally and cannot be precisely dated. They were particularly popular in eastern Bengal where the influence of Brahmans was relatively weak. A question is being asked on the left-hand side of this page in a blue box. Why do you think the second category of text was not written down? Peers and Temples From the 16th century, people began to migrate in large numbers from the less fertile Western Bengal to the forested and marshy areas of southeastern Bengal. As they moved Eastwards, they cleared forests and brought the land under rice cultivation. Gradually, local communities of fisherfolk and shifting cultivators, often tribals, merged with the new communities of peasants. This coincided with the establishment of Mughal control over Bengal, with their capital in the heart of the eastern delta at Dhaka.
officials and functionaries received land and often set up mosques that served as centers for religious transformation in these areas. The early settlers sought some order and assurance in the unstable conditions of the new settlements. Page 133 These were provided by community leaders who also functioned as teachers and adjudicators and were sometimes ascribed with supernatural powers. People referred to them with affection and respect as peers. This term included saints or Sufis and other religious personalities, daring colonizers and defied soldiers, various Hindu and Buddhist deities and even animistic spirits. The cult of Peers became very popular and their shrines can be found everywhere in Bengal. Bengal also witnessed a temple building spree from the late 15th century which culminated in the 19th century. We have seen chapters 2 and 5 that temples and other religious structures were often built by individuals or groups who were becoming powerful to both demonstrate their power and proclaim their piety. Many of the modest brick and terracotta temples in Bengal were built with the support of several low social groups such as the Kolu or oil pressers and the Kansari or bell metal workers. The coming of the European trading companies created new economic opportunities. Many families belonging to these social groups availed of these. On the right-hand top of this page, an important information is provided regarding animism. Animism Attribution of living soul to plants, inanimate objects and natural phenomena. On the right-hand middle of this page, a question is being asked, written in a blue box. Compare the temple shown here with that in Chapter 2. On the left-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is Figure 11. A double-roofed thatched hut. On the right-hand bottom of this page, a picture is shown. This is Figure 12. This is the picture of a four-roofed temple with a tower. Page number 134 As their social and economic position improved, they proclaimed their status through the construction of temples. When local deities, once worshipped in thatched huts in villages, gained the recognition of Brahmins, their images began to be housed in temples. The temples began to copy the double-roofed dochala or four-roofed chochala structure of the thatched huts. Remember the Bangla Dome in Chapter 5. This led to the evolution of the typical Bengali style in temple architecture. In the comparatively more complex four-roofed structure, four triangular roofs placed on the four walls move up to converge on a curved line or a point. Temples were usually built on a square platform. The interiors were relatively plain, but the outer walls of many temples were decorated with paintings, ornamental tiles or terracotta tablets. In some temples, particularly in Vishnupur in the Bangpura district of West Bengal, such decorations reached a high degree of excellence. On the top of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 13. It shows Krishna with gopis, terracotta plaque, from the Shamarya temple, Vishnupur. Page number 135. Fish as food. Traditional food habits are generally based on locally available items of food. Bengal is a riverine plain which produces plenty of rice and fish. Understandably, these two items figure prominently in the menu of even poor Bengalis. 
fishing has always been an important occupation and Bengali literature contains several references to fish. What is more, terracotta plaques on the walls of temples and vihars or Buddhist monasteries depict scenes of fish being dressed and taken to the market in basket. Brahmins were not allowed to eat non-vegetarian food, but the popularity of fish in the local diet made the Brahminical authorities relax this prohibition for the Bengal Brahmins. The Brihad Dharma Puran, a 13th century Sanskrit text from Bengal, permitted the local Brahmins to eat certain varieties of fish. On the right-hand side of this page, a picture is shown. This is figure 14. It shows fish being dressed for domestic consumption. Terracotta plaque from the Vishal Lakshmi Temple, Aram Bagh. Emergence of nation-states in Europe Till the 18th century, people in Europe saw themselves as subjects of an empire, such as the Austro-Hungarian Empire or members of a church such as the Greek Orthodox Church. But from the late 18th century, people also began to identify themselves as members of a community that spoke a common language, such as French or German. By the early 19th century, in Romania, school textbooks began to be written in Romanian rather than in Greek. And in Hungary, Hungarian was adopted as the official language instead of Latin. These and other similar developments created the consciousness among the people that each linguistic community was a separate nation. This feeling was strengthened by the movements for Italian and German unification in the late 19th century. Page 136 Imagine You are a Rajput prince. How would you like your story to be told? Let's recall. 1. Match the following. Anantavarman Jagannath Mahodai Puram, Leela Tilakam, Mangal Kavya, Miniature, Kerala, Bengal, Odisha, Kangara, Puri, Kerala. 2. What is Mani Pravalam? Name a book written in that language. 3. Who were the major patrons of Kathak? 4. What are the important architectural features of the temples of Bengal? Keywords Classical Miniature Peer Dialect Page 137 Let's discuss 5. Why did minstrels proclaim the achievements of heroes? 6. Why do we know much more about the cultural practices of rulers than about those of ordinary people? 7. Why did conquerors try to control the temple of Jagannath at Puri? 8. Why were temples built in Bengal? Let's do. 9. Describe the most important features of the culture of your region, focusing on buildings, performing arts and painting. 10. Do you use different languages for A. Speaking B. Reading C. Writing Find out about one major composition in language that you use and discuss why you find it interesting. 11. Choose one state each from North, West, South, East, and Central India. For each of these, prepare a list of foods that are commonly consumed, highlighting any differences and similarities that you notice. 12. Choose another set of five states from each of these regions and prepare a list of clothes that are generally worn by women and men in each. 
discuss your findings. The chapter 9 of total 10 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Babla Kochar You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control, Bati Langlingdo. Technical Assistance, Vikas Sangwan. Assistance in Production, Kusum Lata. Direction and Production, Vimalesh Chaudhary. This audiobook is brought to you by CIET NCERT, New Delhi, India.